For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken the ways of your people, O house of Jacob. Indeed, they are full of diviners from the east and of soothsayers like the Philistines. And they clasp hands with foreigners. Their land is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is filled with idols. They bow down to the work of their own hands, to what their own fingers have made. And so people are humbled, and everyone is brought low. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty. The haughty eyes of people shall be brought low. And the pride of everyone shall be humbled. And the Lord alone will be exalted on that day. For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up and high, against all the cedars of Lebanon, lofty and lifted up, and against all the oaks of Bashan, against all the high mountains and against all the lofty hills against every high tower and against every fortified wall against all the ships of Tarshish and against all the beautiful craft the haughtiness of people shall be humbled and the pride of everyone shall be brought low and the Lord alone will be exalted on that day the idols shall utterly pass away. Enter the caves of the rocks and the holes of the ground from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of His majesty when He rises to terrify the earth. On that day, people will throw away to the moles and to the bats their idols of silver and their idols of gold which they made for themselves to worship. To enter the caverns of the rocks and the clefts in the crags from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth turn away O mortals who only have breath in their nostrils for of what count are they
Let us pray. Faithful God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. Deeply grateful for the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown toward us. When we call out to you, you answer. When we are exhausted, you give us strength to tarry on. When we find ourselves in trouble, you are there standing beside us. And so we come before you with gratitude and praise, offering you the worship of our hearts and lives. Open our eyes to see and know you are here among us. Open our ears to recognize your voice and send us from out here to live and work in the world as your faithful disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us all rise. Let us join the choir in singing hymn 116 from the Songs of Praise for God's family, hymn 116. Before we enter into the Holy Eucharist, we shall be celebrating the observance of this day with the worship order sent to us from the Diocese of North America in Europe. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and now and shall be forever. Amen. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are thou, O God. Holy are thou, mighty Lord. Holy are thou, immortal Lord. Lord, is the right for us. Have mercy on us. Holy are thou, O God. Holy are thou, mighty Lord. Holy are thou, Immortal Lord, who art the Son of God, have mercy on us. Holy are Thou, O God. Holy are Thou, mighty Lord. Holy are Thou, immortal Lord. See on us. O Lord, have compassion and mercy upon us. O Lord, accept our prayers and worship and have mercy on us. Glory be to you, O God. Glory be to you, O Creator. Father in heaven, Lord be your name, may your kingdom come, may your be your Lord of us in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as you forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of yours, I now and forever. Amen. Prayer of adoration. O God, from whom every gift derives, we gather to worship you this day. You are an awesome God, greater than our comprehension or our imagination. You are beyond our any word we could ever use to describe you. And yet, through Jesus, we know the intimacy of your vast love. We have come to you in thanksgiving and praise to know that you are God and to place our lives anew into your perspective. Enlarge our vision this hour with your word, instill in us again. Your hope in place of our despair, your peace where our hatred threatens, your joy amidst our depression, your love overwhelming our party. May your Holy Spirit surround and dwell in this congregation now and forevermore. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. After every prayer of confession, let us in antiphone responsively chant, Lord have mercy. Eternal God, you love us profoundly and deeply as the richest and clearest sign of your love. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to provide new and eternal life for all who trust in him. Yet we intentionally re reject your gift of love. Instead, we chose actions, thoughts, and words rooted in spiritual darkness, not in your light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord have, Lord have mercy. Almighty Father, you provide all we need, yet despite your generosity, we fail to submit to your will. We worship and serve you half-heartedly. We neglect to love our neighbors with your love. 
We refuse to forgive those who hurt, reject, and wound us. We seek to advance our own agendas instead of your redemptive plan. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord have, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you alone give our lives meaning, purpose, and joy by calling us to follow you. You desire us to keep in step with you and love and to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We hear your voice and we read your word, but we hesitate to make your pace our pace. We feel like running ahead or even away from you. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord have, Lord have mercy. Heavenly Father, as a community of believers, we admit that we do not always live as the body of Christ. We isolate ourselves from one another. We gossip. We criticize. We speak words of pain. And we harbor grudges. As we seek to be a covenant community, we ask that you help us to pursue deep relationships with one another, to restore what is broken, and to offer mercy and kindness to our fellow brothers and sisters. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord have, Lord have mercy. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. Let us approach the throne of grace with thanksgiving in our hearts. After each prayer of thanksgiving, let us all together sing the chorus, Count Your Blessings. Great God of all blessings, source of all life, and giver of all grace, we thank you for the precious gift of life. We thank you for all that you graciously supply, for the breath that sustains us, for the food of this earth that nourishes us, and for the love of family and friends that enriches us. We are grateful for the communities to which we belong, for our neighbors, for our friends and peers at school, for our colleagues at work, and for our brothers and sisters of all ages, all races, and all nations. We thank you, O oh Lord, for these blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Great God of bountiful mercies, we are thankful that you have a gracious purpose in the suffering we face and for having a plan, even in life's most painful moments. We thank you, O Lord, that you know and care about every hardship and heartache in our lives. Enable us to live by faith and respond with joy regardless of our circumstances. We offer praise and thanksgiving for your church that built us up. And we especially thank you for the Marthoma Church and its ministry among the youths that seek to nurture and nourish us in faith 
to be a righteous generation. Merciful God, we thank you for these blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Great God of abundant grace, we thank you for the multitude of ways that you call us to be stewards of the gifts and talents you have granted to us. Enable us to make use of every opportunity you provide to serve you and to serve others. Please bestow upon us the grace and strength we need to strive for the good of each other. O oh Lord, we thank you for your presence among us and for your promise to be with us now and always. Gracious God, we thank you for these blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Let us intercede before God. After each prayer of intercession, let us respond by together praying. Creator of us all, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole world and especially countries and regions which have been affected by wars and conflicts especially the people of Ukraine and Afghanistan. Let us also pray for regions which have been affected by natural calamities, and also regions where the pandemic is still bringing disruption to normal life. Creator of us all, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our beloved children who this day are being pushed to a point to take their own life, for those haunted by hopelessness, for those pushed to the edge of grief, for those overwhelmed by stress or financial pressures, for those caught fast in chains of addiction, for those feeling unwanted and unloved, for those who can love everyone but themselves. Creator of us all, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the youth fellowships in the various parishes, the regional youth fellowship, the various activities and programs in the parish, and regional levels which enables the faith enrichment and fellowships of our youths. Creator of us all, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all our students in various schools, colleges, and universities as they pursue their academic courses that God may keep them safe, healthy, and encouraged to do their best even in the hardest of situations. Creator of us all, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Marthoma Church our Metropolitan, Dr. Theodosius Marthoma Metropolitan, the Episcopal Synod, and all who lead the Church. Let us pray for the North America and Europe Diocese, and especially for our Diocesan Bishop, Dr. Isaac Mar Philoxenos Episcopa, Diocesan Secretary, Rev. George Abraham, Program Manager, Rev. Christopher Daniel, Diocesan Treasurer, Mr. George P. Babu, council members and others who lead the various mission initiatives of our diocese. Let us pray for all our Achins, Kochimas, and our, their children who are involved with the ministry of the church with all their struggles and challenges. Creator of us all, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Diocesan Youth Fellowship and its various programs and activities. Let us pray for all the youth chaplains, Reverend Jesmyn Simon John, Reverend Jess M. George, Reverend Jason A. Thomas, and Reverend Thomas K. Matthew, and our lay chaplains, Mr. Tom Phillip and Ms. Pushpa Samuel, that their ministry brings new blessings to the youths in the diocese. Let us also pray for the DYF council members, Mr. Jeevan Vergus, Mr. Adam T. Matthew, and Mr. Devin Abraham. 
Creator of us all, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the 2023 Diocesan Leadership Conference to be hosted by the Sehion Marthoma Church and the 2023 Diocesan Youth Conference to be hosted by the St. Thomas Marthoma Church of Chicago. Let us pray that all the arrangements and preparations may prove to be fruitful for the leaders and the participants. Creator of us all, hear our prayer. As a mark of our dedication before God, I request the congregation to repeat this prayer of dedication after me. Lord God, Lord God you have called us to walk humbly before you, to love kindness, and to act justly. Today we come before you, asking your spirit to empower us to be agents of transformation in this world. Make us channels from which others can be blessed. Enable us all to live a life of service, humility and reconciliation. Accept our dedication, O Lord, and use us for your glory. Amen. May the love, grace, peace, and the abiding presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us prepare ourselves to listen to the Word of God. The first and the second lesson shall now be read. After the reading of the first lesson from the Old Testament, let us join the choir in singing hymn 100, following which the New Testament shall be read, for the second lesson shall be read from the New Testament, the first and the second lessons. Hear the word of God as it is written in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, beginning to read from verse 1 to 10. The book of Daniel, chapter 6, beginning to read from verse 1 to 10. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps, to be over the whole kingdom, and over these governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought of, to set, setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they couldn't find no charge or fault, because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators, the satraps, the counselors, and the advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make firm a decree that whoever petitions any good or any god or man for Thirty days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the written the writing, so that it cannot be changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with the, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before the God, before his God, as it was his custom since the early days. Here ends the first lesson. This is the word of God.
Hear the word of God, as it is written in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of God, of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow, grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves, and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline, God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Here ends the first and second lessons. Praise be to God. In your light we see the light, Jesus, full of light. It's your lie that upon our world shines light our minds. May your light reveal the sin in our hearts as we humbly pray in spirit 
Spirit and truth. Pure and glory, one who dwells on high in mansions of love. Jesus Christ, born of Mary, baptized by John, have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, Almighty Lord. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. Holy. Apostles, the riches of your divine wisdom, and the gift of your Holy Spirit, enable us to obey your commands and gladly to fulfill your holy will perfectly. Amen. From the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4. Praise Praise you, Lord, 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 So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, 
Our inner nature is being renewed day by day for this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure because we look not on what can be seen but on what cannot be seen for what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal hallelujah oh hallelujah offer to the lord sacrifices of praise come and worship in his holy courts alleluia brothers and sisters let us stand in silence awe and reverence and listen to the proclamation of the living word of god from the gospel of jesus christ our lord peace be with you all the holy gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ which proclaims life and salvation to the whole world as recorded by saint mark the evangelist in the days of jesus the christ our lord and savior word of life god incarnate of the blessed virgin mary it happened in this manner as he was setting out on a journey a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him good teacher what must i do to inherit eternal life Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions peace be with you all we thank you lord that you have given us the gospel which is the light of the world and draws us to you enable us by your grace to praise you to the living words of your gospel let us pray to the Lord for His grace and mercy. Lord, the Lord of blessings, help us and bless us. O Lord God, help us continually to offer up to You praises and thanksgiving. To Him who absolves us from our debts and pardons our sins. To Him who receives the penitent and rejoices in the return of sinners to him who has promised call and i will answer knock and i will open and stretch forth my hand to pardon your sins and iniquities to him belong glory and honor and worship all the days of our lives Amen. Let us pray to the Lord for His grace and mercy. Almighty and glorious Lord, save us from the vile of the evil one. Lord, in Your grace and mercy, You took flesh of the Blessed Virgin Mary and became human among humankind lord of lords do not banish us 
from your presence and from the company of the angels who continually praise your holy name and proclaim aloud that the Lord God is holy. Show us ever the way of life and salvation so that we may persevere to attain to your glorious kingdom. O Lord Jesus Christ, look upon us with your merciful eyes. Save us from our enemies and all that would hurt us. Protect us in the shadow of your cross. O Lord Jesus Christ, save us from all greed and deceit. Save us from all evil thoughts, defilement and blasphemy. O Lord Jesus Christ, make us to rejoice with all the children of your kingdom. To you and to the Father and to the Holy Spirit, we ascribe all praise and thanksgiving O Lord God, who makes the sinner righteous, pardons our sins and makes us holy, blot out all my great and innumerable sins. Through your loving mercy, good Lord, wipe away the sins of all believers. O oh Lord God, in your mercy and goodness, remember us, our parents, brothers and sisters, our bishops, clergy, teachers of the faith, and all faithful children of your holy and glorious church. O Lord God, comfort us in body, mind, and spirit. Shower your mercy upon us. Be the remission of our sins. Make us all worthy of the good end that is set for all children of peace to you we offer praise and thanksgiving we can sin full as we are let us confess and together say holy is the Holy Father. Amen. Holy is the Holy Son. Amen. Holy is the living and holy Spirit. Amen. Wisdom cries aloud. Let us stand in reverence and affirm together. We believe in the one true God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. We believe in the one Lord. Jesus Christ, the Holy God, the Son of God, the God of the Father, before all worlds, light of light, very God of very God, God of all being, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came out from heaven, and was described by the Holy Spirit of the Church of Him, and was made man, he was crucified for us. 
with his wife, suffered, died, and was buried. The third day he rose again, by his father, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge both the living and the dead. Of his kingdom there will be no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord and Lord of life proceeds from the Father, with the Father and Son together is worship and glorify, who spoke by the prophets and apostles. We believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. For the remission of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the new life of the world to come. Amen. Varak Mars Thomas follows. Please be seated. Those who have celebrated their birthdays this past week and have come prepared for Thanksgiving may please now come forward. Let us look to God in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, like a loving parent, you brought us forth into this world to lead human lives. You led us with your Holy Spirit to dwell as living beings with the knowledge that you are our creator and our sustainer. Above all, we praise your holy name for revealing yourself to us as an eternal companion. You are a good sibling who stands by us. You are a good friend in all our needs. You are the light that shines in darkness to all of us. You are the cloud that shrouds us from the blazing heat of toils in life. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for holding onto our hands throughout this earthly journey. We pray for these, our brothers and sisters, who, through a journey of yet another year, have come forward in testimony, submitting, submitting their lives unto your keeping and proclaiming that you are their shepherd. Father, enlighten our hearts today with their submission and their witness. As we bow before your throne of majesty, fill us with understanding, give us a discerning heart, and enable us to count our days and our blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank 
Wedding anniversary Thanksgiving. Let us continue to pray. Eternal God, by your unfathomable wisdom, you saw it good that we lead our lives in the ministry of your creation, not alone, but conjoined with companions. Thank you for raising all of us up to be benefactors of this heavenly benediction. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we call to mind the days in which we were called forth to witness the coming together of families before your throne. And on anointed days, thank you for bringing us together as families by your holy hands. To that end, we submit the Canadian Marthoma Church family into your care and your blessings. And we thank, for, thank you for these, our beloved families who dwell among us as channels of your grace, as incessant wellsprings of blessing into our midst. Great are the ways in which you led them, for many and myriad were their experiences. But eternal God, as you were in the beginning, you are now to all of us and to these our brothers and sisters. And you shall ever be the same unto the very end. Father, as we continue in worship, we also call to mind everyone who had wanted to be a part of this worship, but have not been able to. Grant them grace and shade under the shadow of your mighty wings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. നിങ്ങളുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൻ്റെ ആവശ്യങ്ങളിൽ മേലും നിങ്ങളുടെ തലമുറകളിൽ മേലും എന്നും എന്നേക്കും ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കുമാറാകട്ടെ ദൈവമായ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ കരുണയും കൃപയും വാഴ്വും നിങ്ങൾ ഓരോരുത്തരുടെ മേലും നിങ്ങളുടെ കുടുംബ ജീവിതത്തിൻ മേലും നിങ്ങളുടെ തലമുറകളിൽ മേലും എന്നും എന്നേക്കും ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കുമാറാകട്ടെ Let us now join the choir in singing hymn 257, during which we shall submit our offertory before God, hymn 257.
Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side. I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. O oh Lord, thank you for opening the gates of the bounties of heaven. Thank you for unleashing the dew of the earth, all for our blessing and abundant life. From what we were able to gain through this life and all that we enjoy, even the breath that we breathe, Everything is your own. To that end, as a testimony, we submit this offering before you. As you receive them, we also pray that you would bless them and fill us with discernment and passion to serve so that when you entrust these back unto us, we would put them to good use for the furtherance of your holy kingdom as we pray upon this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> there was once a young boy. He loved his father very much. His father was such a jolly person, somebody who could enthrall crowds, engage children, and he had a lot of magic tricks up his sleeves. And the boy's hero was his dad. But one day, after school, when he stepped out of his school gate, to run into the hands of his father who would every day come to take him back home. He saw handcuffs on his father's hand. This shattered the boy. It marred his life forever. When our children are in Sunday school here, if one of them by mistake, by mistake, should walk up from the basement or step out of those rooms and see what their parents are doing. I leave my sentence trailing. I don't want to think about it. Worship begins not when the curtains are drawn. Worship begins the rest is just public witness of what happens with him. I plead with you my dear fathers, mothers, my beloved brothers, my sisters, when you walk into church, we enjoy communion and fellowship. I agree with you, sin per sin. But that communion and fellowship first begins with God. When you walk through those doors, first come and sit and pray that the covenant of communion that we celebrate here every day when we meet together would be the anchor upon which, would be the foundation upon which we share fellowship after benedictions in the foyer. Correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
if I am wrong. Today is Youth Sunday. We have one among us prayerfully prepared to be used by God to touch us with His Word, His will, and His revelations. May I very prayerfully call upon our dear brother, Joel Thompson, to speak to us from God's Word. Thank you, Acha, uh, for giving me uh, this opportunity, as well as the youth group, um, for allowing me to come and uh, talk to you, as Achin said, uh, about my reflections. Uh, first of all, just wanted to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, as we stand here on Thanksgiving Sunday, I especially am grateful for the youth ministry, because uh, when I first came as a gangly teen, uh, many moons ago, Back when I had hair, um, I, I was uh, drawn to the youth group, and the youth group was one of the ways where I felt a sense of belonging and could participate in the church. And, and so I'm grateful uh, for the youth ministry. And so with a uh, grateful heart and fond memories, I will uh, share with you some reflections. And just to preface it, I will be elaborating on uh, the theme given by our church for this Youth Sunday, which is Youth uh, Inheritors of Faith. Uh, and before I do that, I just want to say a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together uh, in, at the, in this Thanksgiving Sunday. Thank you a lot for all that you've blessed us with and all, all that you continue to bless us with. Lord, um, use me today, imperfect as I am, speak through me, and enrich the lives of those who are listening. Thank you once again for your blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. So, just again, coming back to the, the theme, which is youth inheritors of faith, and it's such a beautiful theme uh, that I hope to share with you through some of the readings that we've done today. So first of all, when, when I thought about this, it struck me that faith was equaled with something such as an inheritance, an inheritance. When you think about an inheritance, we think about estates and wealth and heirlooms and certain things that uh, are passed down. Of, uh, and, and so you wonder, why is faith equated to something like that? Uh, what makes faith uh, something that valuable? Uh, so again, uh, this being Youth Sunday, I hope to engage the youth uh, as well. And so I'll be peppering you with uh, requests for Bible readings. So let's look at, again, what many of us already know to be a good definition of faith that we often understand from the Bible. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And someone from the youth maybe can read. Yeah. I know some of you have got the portion, so go ahead, read it. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Thank you, Ajah. So we, we have referred to this definition many a times, and we, we have a, a sense of understanding of what faith is. So 
why is this equal to something as, as maybe grand as in, in our conceptions as an inheritance? So when I uh, thought about this, a, something that immediately came to my mind was the fact that it, it was the faith of one man who God credited as righteousness, who said, I will give you sons as innumerable as the stars. And though our human, our human understanding of biology didn't, uh, could prevent us to see how that was possible, because of the faith of one man, and of course I'm talking about Abraham, God, um, the creator of the universe, made such a big promise. And of course, we know the, the, sto the, the story in Genesis and how Israel came to be, and most importantly, how Jesus Christ descended from that lineage and our Savior was born because of that one man's faith. Maybe something a little more tangible or something not so many thousands of years ago, but something uh, more recent. We can say that it is the faith uh, of a small group of immigrants uh, that came together and started a community of worshipers here. And over the years, it has blossomed into, into this um, scenario where we have this beautiful establishment where we can come and practice our faith. So why, why is this faith, this this thing that we understand so grand and worthy of an inheritance. And so maybe if we can think about inheritance a little bit, uh, maybe we can get a sense of why that's important that it is something that is inherited. So if I speak of inheritance, I, you know, what comes to mind? Um, Jonathan, I'm going to pick on you. Yeah, but something perhaps that's, are you, are you working for it? Like if you say you've got an inheritance, my uncle from, you know, this part of Kerala or my grandparent, you know, left me some money, an inheritance. Is there anything that we did to earn that? Right, and it's uh, something that I was thinking about um, that it is freely obtained through a certain status, right? Now, there's maybe something that happened recently in the past month that can drive this point home. Uh, anybody know anything that happened in the past month uh, created a big hullabaloo, especially for a country like Canada? Across the pond, mate. Right? So we, uh, we, had, uh, we witnessed that Queen Elizabeth II passed away and the monarch, reigning monarch of the United Kingdom passed away. And so what happened then was, we all know, that King Charles, Prince Charles became King Charles because it was his inheritance, his birthright as the eldest son, the blood relation of the queen, right? And so Thinking about the Abraham and, 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 and the father of the faithful, uh, and, and so trying to understand this great faith we're inheriting, right? So if we look then, how, what status do we have to inherit that faith? Uh, and something that uh, reminded me was a verse in Galatians, chapter 3, verse 29. And this time, I don't want Achin to bail you out, so you have to turn quickly and read it. Galatians, chapter 3, verse 29, loudly. Thank you. So if you belong to Christ, you're Abraham's offspring, as according to the promise. Um, and again, we might have come across this verse uh, as two ways, two things that I thought about again was that as, as inheritors of faith and we, we come to accept that and kind of internalize that fact and we accept Jesus as a savior, right? And that, that fact becomes internalize, right, we are automatically granted that status, that heirship, uh, 
according to the promise that God made. We, we become, though not by blood relation, we, we are, get that status um, so that we get the inheritance. Um, another thing that uh, comes to mind is the fact that with inheritance, we are all sitting here um, and we are all probably born into Christian families, I would say all of us, grew up with this tradition of going to church from a young age. We pray, uh, we have a family prayer, and we have this faith that is passed down to us, right, through uh, our parents, grandparents, the, the, that those, 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 those values, those practices. And so in some ways we've inherited the faith in that sense as well. Uh, Paul, of course, talks about Timothy uh, and how he sees the faith, sincere faith, strong in him because of his mother and grandmother, right? And so these are ways that we've, we've inherited this, this great faith, faith. And thinking about, especially as I'm a father to a one-year-old and, you know, what it means, you know, what, what am I going to teach him or what will he learn from me uh, as such an gave us a warning, uh, you know, if one day he comes and sees me at home, what is he going to learn? Um, that, that, you know, these things that he inherits, that it's something that I have to pass on, right? Or as parents, you know, it is being passed on, this inheritance is being passed on. So, that, so when it comes to the inheritance and thinking about it, if there is nothing, it is, if there, it, it, it's something, there's an act of passing on, which means it has to be maintained, right? So something valuable, if you don't protect it, then there's nothing left to give further. And so when you have something as important as faith, which is equated to things like inheritance, these grand notions that we have of inheritance and, and what we understand from the Bible as how important faith is, we can either maintain and build it and pass it on, or we can diminish it and, in, in, in cases, squander it. So then thinking again back to the, the topic of faith and inheritance and passing inheritance on, how do we maintain and build this great inheritance, this faith? So I want to again remind you, uh, see if you guys were paying attention uh, during our Bible readings. So, uh, what, uh, what was the first Bible reading about? Daniel, right? Uh, and so, we see an example there of an inheritance that's of faith that's passed on, that is maintained even in a foreign setting, right? Um, we heard from the story that despite the extenuating circumstances, I think the last verse was, you know, Daniel st stayed consistent and true to what he was taught, right? Which was in his inheritance, which is what was passed on to him. And how did how did he, you know, it wasn't, you know, he got it, but did he just keep it? How did he maintain it? We read that he prayed three times a day, right? We see an act that he does. Uh, actively something that's being done to maintain and build it. So this thing, great thing that we inherit, if we don't, if we sit passively, there's a chance that we may not pass it on to the next generation, that we can't just expect them to, uh, the next, uh, our future inheritors to just look and say, okay, you know, this is what we ought to do, or this is what we were told to do, we have to consistently do our part and uh, be diligent with it. So in terms of, again, the point being maintaining and building this great inheritance, this faith, there's the discipline of, of keeping it alive, but what about uh, something else that we read today? Uh, in Hebrews, uh, we learned um, in Hebrews 12, there was, as we read through, we learned the importance of persevering. Uh, and looking to Christ as the perfecter of our faith. So struggles will come our way um, as we know to expect as Christians most definitely that we ought to expect it, but just given day-to-day -day life, struggles are going to come. 
Uh, for children, you know, it's like it could be as simple as, hey, I need to, uh, I need my grade is dropping, I need to pass this course or my dad's going to yell at me, maybe in your context. It could be that, you know, there's COVID and there's uncertainty and my financial situation is not doing well. We all have things that go on in our lives that, 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 you know, they, that come, you know, without warning. And so during these struggles, these challenges, we ought to embrace them because, as we write in Hebrews 12, they are opportunities to build our faith. Right? So if somebody can read Hebrews 12, verse 7. Thank you. Endure trials. So it's, you know, it's not every, every situation is not going to be a, a rosy one where we are like, we can expect things to do in clockwork and we build our inheritance, we build our faith. There are going to be unexpected times, struggles, trials, challenges that we don't see coming. And, it's, and even in those times, we ought to embrace it and not ask God why it's happening to me right now, because we don't ask in the good times, but that looking to Jesus as the perfecter of faith to help us build more resiliency, build more discipline, build our faith, that inheritance, right? And so again, we're talking about how to maintain and build this great inheritance. We looked at Daniel who engaged in certain practices that were taught to him and kept consistent. He was actively uh, doing those things. We talked about embracing struggle. Uh, and, and just uh, another thing that uh, struck me as we were talking about the readings uh, in the Bible uh, from the Gospel. So faith without, we all know the saying in James, that faith without deeds is? I think I heard it, is dead. Um, and so, you know, the, the rich man comes to Jesus, buttering him up, good teacher, how do I inherit eternal, eternal life? Um, and we, we all heard the gospel. Uh, and Jesus, at the end of it all, he, you know, Jesus says, well, there's one more thing you ought to do. And, and to me, when I'm picturing that scene, it's almost like there's the essence of these things that you've learned from and, 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 and know that you're not doing, right? And I want to point that specific verse, if I could, uh, I, I believe Mark 10, 20. Two seconds before Chen reads it. Since my youth, we go to we go to Sunday school from you know grade four nursery. I'm the Sunday school secretary. I should know, and um, you know we have family prayers even before that. And from from a very young age, we know these stories. Um, but are we practicing the essence of those stories? Uh, those lessons, those things that we're reading in the Bible. Um, are we in fact loving our neighbors as ourselves when we, when we are in our schools, in our universities, we see a friend struggling because of bullying, because of depression, because of financial situations, they don't have us up. When we are, are at work and we see a person who, who can't get their projects done because they have some personal issues, are we going to them and trying to understand, hey, how can I take on some of your projects so that you don't get yelled at by the boss and fired? Because I know there's something more going on. Like, are we, are we going looking beyond, hey, how's the weather doing? Man, it's gonna snow soon, gosh. Like, hey, that's a great, uh, you got a Tesla today? Wow, like, are we going beyond the inane uh, or the, the things that are on the outside and trying to reach out uh, and be the good Samaritans where we can? Uh, and so, in terms of practicing faith, this is one, one avenue uh, of how a faith can come across in our deeds. Um, so we've talked about faith. Why is it uh, such a great inheritance? Uh, the meaning uh, of inheritance and the importance of it being passed down and that if it's not maintained and built, that it could be squandered. We looked at how we can maintain and build uh, our faith some ways. 
But are there ways that, uh, what are some ways that uh, uh, are roadblocks or some things that are roadblocks uh, that could be roadblocks for our faith, uh, where our faith could deteriorate and be squandered? One thing that comes in mind and just looking at a counterpoint to Daniel's uh, story that we write today, uh, in a sense, one could say Daniel coming into this uh, foreign situation, um, he finds himself quickly progressing and given these responsibilities. His career is advancing. But he doesn't forget his faith and his roots and where he comes from, no matter the position he's in. He's as diligent and consistent and true to when he was nobody and, uh, and unknown as when he was placed in charge and in an administrative position. And so when we think about our, we go out from this church and we have jobs to do, we have schools to go to, we have grades to maintain, you know, are we only, you know, are we running, going through these progressions and leaving our faith behind? Do we bring our faith along in, 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 our situa in our daily situations? And so, you know, is it only when we need that grade, when we need that promotion, when we need that job, or, or is, it, is there a consistency to it? Um, and the other thing, of course, maybe obvious, uh, again, from the gospel reading today uh, is wealth. That could be a roadblock. And Jesus put it no better than saying it is easier for a rich man to go to heaven, easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to go to heaven. And, of course, there are those or there are ways to honor God with our wealth and 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 just as uh, Abraham did and we mean the story with Lot where we don't hold on to our material possessions but if that if we fall into love with our material worldly possessions and we forget where they originate from then isn't that something that deteriorates our faith as well so again two things that came to mind in terms of things that we should watch out as we go out uh, of, uh, into the world. So I stand here and, uh, you know, it seems like, you know, I, I'm going through these verses and talking to you, making it seem like, you know, hey, this is uh, something that I am, you know, that I, I, I have no issues with. Or for me, the hardest thing uh, that I, I, I struggle with uh, constantly is uh, making sure that the duality of life isn't there, that, that faith um, it carries, carries forward in, in university, in work. And so it's definitely something that we all go through. Um, and it's maybe not something that just happens instantaneously and is there. It's maybe a constant practice and thing that we do daily and we get better at it. Um, just on the, on the uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll leave with a, you know, story um, uh, and, and just wind up here. Um, I was just browsing my phone uh, the other day and just this article came up where, uh, on New York Times, where a Canadian family of four is traveling Asia and Africa because their children, uh, two of their children will soon lose, three, sorry, three of the children are soon going to lose their vision because of a condition. It's just something that I saw like the other day and it just stuck with me because not only is it Thanksgiving weekend and you know, just thinking about this topic, you know, we don't know, you know how long we are here. Um, we take many things for granted often. Uh, and even sometimes uh, with faith that, you know, that it's something that, that'll be there even if we don't actively work on it. But take it from this family and, and, and what they're trying to do for their children that, you know, we don't know when anything can happen or to be taken away. And so we should constantly ask ourselves then, being in, given this great responsibility, this great inheritance of faith, 
you know, are we, are we trying, are we doing our best to maintain it and build it so that we can pass it on to the inheritors, to the next generation, to the youth? Or, or, or do we leave it on the side and forget about it and in, in that way deteriorates? So let's pray together, uphold each other, and help each other maintain and build that faith so that together we can pass it on to the next generation. Thank you and God bless. May I now call upon Sanjana Joseph to lead us in a short prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for today. I pray for all those who are able to come to church today. I pray that as we heard the sermon, that we may take it into our daily lives, that inheritance can be what we maintain, build, and pass on our faith to others, that the inheritance is our faith. To maintain, we must do our part to keep our faith strong. I also pray for all those who are not able to come to church or are watching online. Please guide us and bless us, dear God. Please help us and guide us, youth, to spread your word everywhere we can. Please bless Joel Chachin for sharing a beautiful message today and bless Rojiachin and family. Continue to be with Rojiachin as he continues his ministry. I pray for the church and all its sub-organizations. Help us youth to do good in the world and help those in need. May we always be thankful for what we have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the sacrament of confession. With our eyes closed on the outward, with our hearts open inward, let us raise our beings as they are to the majesty of God before which we are unworthy to stand. But the command of God remains be holy as I am holy. By our words, by our thoughts, by our deeds, by our ways, we have fallen short of the glory and holiness of God. But the love of God reveals itself in that while we were still sinners. Christ, by his love and passion for us, did die for us. Let us first of all confess that we have all sinned. We have hurt others. We have brought pain through the ways in which we lead ourselves to the very heart of God. But by his mercy, God spoke to us. And by his unfathomable love, he prepares a table of fellowship and love for all of us. as we continue repenting before God. May I call upon everyone who wishes to partake of the Holy Communion to stand up in their respective places and to repeat this prayer of confession after me. I confess that I have sinned against you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in thought, word, and deed. I am sorry with all my heart for these my innumerable sins. I believe in your promise that you will receive all those who truly repent. O Lord, who are merciful and full of grace, accept me, even as you accepted the publican the woman who was a sinner and the thief while on the cross, comfort me 
with the consolation of your word. O Lord, grant that your holy body and holy blood, in which I now partake, may redeem me from judgment and condemnation and bring me to life and wholeness. Amen. May God Almighty be compassionate to all of you who have truly confessed your sins. God has freely forgiven you your sins to make you worthy to partake in this Holy Communion. Amen. Dearly beloved, pray with me that this service may be acceptable to the Lord. Lord, we have made up your door. We have come to your house in the great of blessing. Thank for yourself and for your truth. O Lord, hear the answers and prayers of your people. We have promised that we do the way of your name. We pray that you send us the gift of your Holy Spirit to make his will in us, your people, as you brought in the apostles. O oh God and Lord of all, make us worthy to greet one another with the kiss of peace, freed from all insincerity and united in love to you, O Father, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit. We give praise and glory. Hosho, wa wa kulla sabaan ala almin. Amen. Peace be with you all. And also with you. In the love of our Lord God, let us greet one another in peace. Brothers and sisters, having received this holy and divine peace, let us bow our heads before the merciful Lord. Gracious Lord, we bow before you. Merciful Father, you dwell on high, yet condescend to look upon things that are lowly. Bless now those who have bowed their heads in your presence with the grace of your only Son, with whom and with the Holy Spirit, you accept all praise and glory. Hosho, Baba Kulla Saban Ala Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us participate in this holy Kurbana, which is now offered to us with commitment, reverence, humility, purity of heart, love, true faith, and devotion to God the Father. To whom all things belong, is offered the sacrifice of grace, peace, and praise in a spirit of unity and concord. The love of God the Father, the grace of the only begotten Son, the communion and abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all, dearly beloved both now and forever and also with you may our hearts be with Christ on high our hearts truly are with the Lord 
to sing praises and worship the Creator of all things. She surely is good and bright, who is adored by the heavenly hosts, the sun and the moon and all the stars, the earth and the seas and all that dwell there, the angels and the archangels, thrones and powers, Kerubim and Seraphim ever proclaiming. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, and on earth are full of His glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who has come, and is to come again in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When the sinless one of His own will chose to suffer death for us sinners. He took bread in his holy hands. Bless the Lord. He gave thanks. Blessed. Sanctified. And broke it. And gave it to his apostles saying. Take eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me Amen. in the same way he took the cup bless the lord he gave thanks bless sanctified and give it to his apostles saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins Amen. thus as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O oh Lord, we remember your death. We celebrate your resurrection and we await your second coming. May your blessing rest upon us all. O oh Lord, we remember your death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and look forward to your second coming to judge the world in righteousness and truth. We offer this service and sacrifice, entreating you not to deal with this according to our sins, but according to your own abundant mercy and saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord of God. We give you thanks to you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we worship you, O source of all goodness. Have mercy on us and bless us. Answer unto us, O Lord. Answer unto us, O Lord. Answer unto us, O Lord. And by your grace have mercy on us. Spirit, sanctify this bread, that it may be the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctify the wine in this chalice, 
that it may be the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord God, sanctify the bodies and souls of those who receive these gifts, that they may bear fruit for the stability of your holy church. Establish ever more firmly your holy church founded on the rock of faith against which the gates of hell shall not prevail and preserve her to the end from strife and error to you with the son and the holy spirit we offer praise and thanksgiving look with mercy o lord on your holy church throughout the world, on all the bishops who bear the burden of leading and guiding her, especially our Father and God, Right Reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthema Metropolitan, the moderators of CSI and CNI, Archbishop of the Anglican Communion, our diocesan episcopa, other bishops, priests, deacons, evangelists, faithful members of our church and seekers of the faith. Lord, we remember all who exercise authority in various countries, especially in this country. Give to, each one, give to each one your Holy Spirit that they may diligently work in your vineyard. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we remember the Mother of our God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Apostles, the Prophets, the Preachers, the Evangelists, the martyrs, the confessors, and all the saints. Lord, we remember the three councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, and Ephesus, and all the holy fathers who participated in them. Make us worthy to follow in their footsteps. Lord, we also remember all the faithful who are departed and fallen asleep in the true faith. Grant that we also may with them be counted worthy of the remission of our sins and be gathered into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful universe you have created and the life and the possibilities of it. Forgive us, O Lord, for we have distorted the universe for our greed and selfishness. Help us, O Lord, to be good and faithful stewards for the fulfillment of your will. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. The blessing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all dearly beloved, both now and forever. Brothers and sisters, we must pray to the Lord always for reconciliation and peace and for his blessings and mercy. Lord, in your, in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord for unity in the church and harmony between all people and communities. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for peace in our families and grace in our hearts that we may be strengthened in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for recovery of the health for the sick, comfort for the distress, deliverance for prisoners, safety for travelers, unity and love for those who are estranged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us give glory to God the Father, Lord of all, and worship his only begotten Son, and praise his holy and life-giving Spirit. O Lord, Lord of all blessings, we commit our lives into your keeping and pray for your blessings. Gracious God, have mercy upon us and bless us. As we continue to stand, let us intercede before God. Let us at the very outset, thank God for leading us through yet another year to witness the festivities of another Thanksgiving. As we celebrate this day of commemoration together with the citizens of this great blessed nation, 
Let us pray that the breath of God that empowers and enlivens us would enable us to celebrate in worship too with spirit and in truth. Let us pray to God for the youths in our parish, especially the ministry of the youth fellowship. Let us call to mind all their, elect, their elected office bearers, representatives who join hands in leading young women and men of Christ into the world to bear God's light. Let us also pray for the Yuvajana Sakyam. Let us thank God for the Idavaga mission. Let us submit the Seviya Sangam into God's hands in prayer. Let us lift up our Sunday school before God, thanking God for the children and the teachers and all the parents who bring them to church. Let us praise God for the ministry of our choir. Let us intercede for our executive members, members of the Kaistana Samadhi, our area prayer groups. Let us especially pray that this laissez-faire attitude that we maintain in keeping ourselves away from prayers but in contradiction, bringing us together for all other festivities in large numbers would be rid of from our minds. Let us pray for members of our parish who we have been lifting up before God in intercession through the days, weeks, months and years. As we pray for them today, let us foremost ask God to open our eyes to see the graces in which our weaknesses in being helpless and their seeming weaknesses are all strengthened and kept alive day to day by the great sustainer God. Let us pray for Mrs. Kunyunya Makalambukata. Let us pray for Mrs. Dolly. Let us pray for Ludhiyama Auntie. Let us pray for Mrs. Anna Marajan. Let us pray for Mrs. Gina Sajan. Let us pray for Mrs. Rachel Matthew. Let us also call to mind members outside of our parish who have requested us to pray for them. Let us pray for Rajesh and Roshni who are recuperating after nephrological surgeries. Let us pray for The father of our member, Alan Titus, who in Canada recently underwent a cardiothoracic surgery. Let us pray for families affected by natural calamities here in the continent of North America, especially in the U.S., in Florida. Let us pray for victims of gunshots and fires that claimed lives, especially their families who are bereaving the loss of their dear ones. Let us pray for our church.
let us pray to God that he would give us understanding that as temples of the Holy Spirit we the members of the body of Christ are the church there is an election that's coming up fast in all the towns around this region let us pray that those be elected to serve would do so with understanding that they have been called to a ministry rather than a position of mere honor let us pray to God for the upcoming parish convention and God's ministers who have been anointed to speak to us through the word this year let us submit our personal needs into God's hands and pray for yet another moment O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make perfect the offerings and oblations presented before you. Sanctify our bodies, souls, and spirits, so that with pure and confident hearts we may address you as God and Father and pray. Our Father in heaven. Lord be your name. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and blessings of the holy and glorious Trinity uncreated, self-existent, eternal, adorable, and one in essence. Be with you all, dearly beloved, both now and forever. And also with you, O holy and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. Holy things for holy people. Holy is the one Father, holy is the one Son, holy is the one Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. One from the beginning, forever and ever. Amen. The one Holy Father, who created the world in his mercy is with us. Amen. The one Holy Son who saved it by his precious passion is with us. Amen. The one living Holy Spirit who makes perfect and fulfills all that is and that has been is with us may the name of the lord be blessed as in the beginning both now and forever Lord have 
mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord have, Lord have mercy. My beloved brothers and sisters, pray for me. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord has mercy on those who fear him. Bless us, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be. Amen. O Lord, at your command, death held its sway. You abolished death through your resurrection from the dead. Therefore we praise and exalt you. O Lord, every mouth shall sing your praise. O Lord, who gathers up the children of Adam from everywhere, bless us and help us. O Son of God, who let us change our earth and life, raise us from the dust, so that we may be able to praise you. God the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, is worthy of glory and worship forever. From the beginning, from the generation, to the generation, may he be praised. Amen. O Son of God, who came for our salvation and will come again for our resurrection and for the renewal of our race, grant, we pray, forgiveness of sins to your servants through your own atoning sacrifice. O oh Lord God, graciously bless these your children who partake of your most precious body and blood which was broken and shed on the heights of Calvary that they may abide in your presence forever. Amen. The grace and blessings of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be on those who bear these sacred mysteries, on those who dispense them, on those who receive them, on all who have participated, and on all who shall participate in them. The blessing of our Lord be on us all, both now and forever. God, mercy and bless us. Glory and grace be to you. Our Lord and our everlasting refuge. The holy body of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken on the heights of Calvary for the forgiveness of sins, is now being offered to you for the health of your body and your souls. Partake of it in good remembrance that Christ did die for us. Amen. Amen.
the holy blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ which was shed on Calvary for the forgiveness of sins is now being offered to you for the health of your bodies and your souls partake of it in good remembrance that Christ did die for us Amen, Amen.
May the holy body and holy blood of which we have partaken be not for our judgment and condemnation, but for the life and salvation of us all. O oh Lord, grant us your blessing.
We praise you, O Lord, because in your abundant mercy you have fed and strengthened us with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have thereby made us one with him and with all the members of his mystical body. We pray you to give us grace to continue in that holy fellowship and ever to offer glory and praise to you and to your only begotten Son and to your Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, bless us all. O Creator, keep us all. Show us ever the way of salvation, O oh Lord, and help us of all. O Lord, as I see your servant, who has ministered in your holy presence, accept the praises and petitions of us, your people, and pardon our offenses, enable us to receive your gifts and blessings, and send us with your peace. My beloved brothers and sisters, I commend you to the grace and blessings of the holy and glorious Trinity. Go forth in peace with the blessings that you have received from the atoning sacrifice of the Lord. Amen. You both near and far, who are saved by the victorious cross of the Lord and sealed with the seal of holy baptism, this holy trinity will forgive you your sins and comfort your souls. Amen. Pray for me, my beloved brothers and sisters, weak and sinful as I am, that I may obtain mercy and help, go forth in peace, filled with gladness and rejoicing. Please be seated. The announcements for the week shall now be read. Good afternoon. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Announcements. Next Sunday, October 16th, is observed as Yuvajana Sikkim Sunday. We will have Holy Communion service in Malayalam at 10 a.m. Parish Convention. Our Parish Convention will be held on Friday, October 21st, Saturday, October 22nd, and Sunday, October 23rd. Reverend Dr. V. S. Varghese, Principal, Marthoma Theological Seminary, Kotem. Reverend Manu Varghese, Vikar, Seattle MTC. And Mr. Tom Phillip, Youth Chaplain for North America and Europe, are the main speakers for this year's convention. The meeting on Friday and Saturday will begin at 7.30 p.m. All members are requested to attend the convention in person prayerfully. Sunday, October 23rd. The final day of our convention is also celebrated as Family Sunday and Parish Day. We have done the Parish Day collection in August. Those who are yet to contribute towards the Parish Day collection are requested to donate during the service on October 23rd. Seviga Sangam Retreat. The Canadian Marthoma Church Toronto and St. Matthew's Marthoma Church will be holding a joint one-day Seviga Sangam Retreat on Saturday, October 15th, 2022 from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. This year's retreat is hosted at the Canadian Marthoma Church by the Canadian Marthoma Church Seviga Sangam. The keynote speakers for this year's retreat will be Reverend Roji Matthews Abraham and Mrs. Ansi Matthews. Theme for the retreat, Her, 
story as defenders of faith. We request all the Seviga Sangam members to attend the event prayerfully and be blessed. Seviga Sangam is also looking for sponsors for this retreat. If you are interested, please contact the Seviga Sangam secretary, Mrs. Binama Sikriya. Senior Fellowship Announcement. Senior Fellowship Meeting for this month will be held on Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 10.30 a.m. at our church. Please inform our Senior Fellowship Coordinator, Mr. Matthew C. Samuel, if you plan to attend in order to make the necessary arrangements for the lunch. Request you all to attend prayerfully. From Matthew C. Samuel, Senior Fellowship Coordinator. Yuvajana Sakyam Announcement. Clothes Donation Drive. The Canadian Marthoma Church Yuvajana Sikkim is organizing a clothes donation drive to help those who are in need. If you have some good and generally used clothes, you're welcome to donate. A drop-off box is kept in the church foyer. Clothes can be deposited in the box, which will be donated to the Salvation Army stores, from where it will be distributed to the needy. Guidelines to the donors, sort out your good and generally used unwanted clothes, Wash, iron, and fold the clothes for gifting. Pack them neatly and compactly for easily handling and dropping off. Last date for donation would be October 31st, 2022. From Shiju Matthew, Yuvajana Sakim Secretary. Our weekly prayer meetings. Fasting prayer on Wednesday, October 12th at 10.30 a.m. virtually on Google Meet. Idava Commission prayer meeting on Friday, October 14th at 8 p.m. virtually on Google Meet. Chain prayer on Saturday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Today, we observed as a Thanksgiving and Youth Sunday. Thanks to all the youths for your active participation and leadership. Thanks to all the youth fellowship members for assisting in today's service and to Mr. Joel Thompson for a meaningful sermon on the theme, Inheritance of Faith. Today we have also done the Thanksgiving collection. If you didn't get a chance to donate, you may please do so in the coming weeks. Thank you all once again for attending today's service. Stay safe and have a blessed week ahead. Thank you. If there are any newcomers or visitors gracing this congregation with your presence, kindly do stand up and introduce yourselves so that we could get to know you better. Yeah, Angla Varnata. A microphone here, please. The Vere K. Titus Malapali Periarum, St. Andrews Martha Churchill, member. Who are Lindsay Uday, father. Ah, Lindsay Uday, Balloon Day, Beetle. Yes, welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Fabian Matthew. Uh, young Mumbai. Parish in honor, Ibada Pudita membership at Mumbai, the parish on a Dombuli, Dombuli, yes. And that's my wife. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is me, Merin, and looking forward to be with you guys. Namada Yu Masate Church Bulletin, the Gilgonet Tondangil, Namada Palile, Valade Pudita to join their family, Anna. Please be sure you say hello to them. I think that was switched off. Okay, I'm okay. I'm Reggie Alex, and uh, this is my son Daniel Alex, and we are joining from uh, Ottawa Marthoma Church. Yeah, you are the secretary there, isn't it? That's right. Yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thanksgiving. It is a very new experience because I've read of this in the history of the early fathers who came to the shores of this continent. Adimaitana celebrate Yan Bogunada. Celebration is Shesham, Endavai, and the Karnambol Yan Parayam. 
ഓക്കെ എന്നാലും നിങ്ങളുടെ സെലിബ്രേഷൻ ഏറ്റവും ഭംഗിയുള്ളതായി തീരട്ടെ ആൻഡ് ഐ വിഷ് യു ഓൾ ദി ബെസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഐ പ്രീ ടു ഗോഡ് ദാറ്റ് ആസ് വി ഹേർഡ് ഇൻ ദ മോർണിംഗ് ദാറ്റ് ഓൾ ആർ സെലിബ്രേഷൻസ് വുഡ് ബി റൂട്ടഡ് ഇൻ ദ വെരി ബീങ് ദാറ്റ് ഗോഡ് ഹാസ് ഗിഫ്റ്റഡ് എസ് ആൻഡ് ദ റീസൺ ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് ബീങ് ഹിസ് ഹിസ് ഹോളി സ്പിരിറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൾ റൈസ് ഫോർ പ്രേയർ Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with a beautiful morning. Thank you for leading us into this wonderful noon. As we go forth into the world that you have created, but that is so much away from you. May our answers that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven be fulfilled through us. In Jesus' most precious name do we pray. Amen. said weekend and thanksgiving and god bless you all
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Let's sing it out in faith. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Let's sing it out that He is. You are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here, turning lives around. Jadi Raja 